Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam, so we're gonna work on another Saturday night special episode here for you. And uh, this week we're gonna we're gonna finish off the uh, viewer appreciation mail that I got in uh, last week and the week before. I told you I had some more to share, so I've got a couple more down here to uh, go over with you. And I've got something else here that I actually won, <laughs> so I was gonna show that. The machining content this week, I, I was gonna, I had something else planned for it, but um, so I've got a job in here that I'm doing for uh, Herb Blair out there in Carrollton, Texas. If you watch his video, he'll, you'll see where he talks about he had an incident with his lathe and uh, his lathe fell over and a couple parts got broken. So he emailed me and asked me would I be willing to fix these for him. I said, sure, send them down here and I'll fix them up. So that's what I've been working on this week, uh, a couple small parts that I had to repair. And I was gonna throw that in this week's video, but um, I got some better, not better, I got some different footage today at work of some heavy turning, uh, machining a shaft. So I decided I'm gonna throw that in today's video and we're gonna make a different, a separate video for her Blair's project. And uh, also I got another video to make for the, uh, the brake parts that I worked on last week also. So, uh, uh, video from Herb's project should be coming very soon, and then as I said today, we're gonna we're gonna show some some turning using my ISCAR uh, turning tools. The one of them is the LNMX insert, and the other one is that uh, I believe a COMG insert that I got a few months ago. I did a test video. Well, I took that down there, and I got this eight-inch diameter 4140 shaft that I'm having to uh, machine for one of the gearboxes. I started that this morning, so I took both those tools so that I could make some heavy roughing cuts and uh, get a little video for the channel here. You guys, I think you guys will enjoy that. Get to see some uh, chip making. So I'm gonna throw all those clips that I took uh, at the end of the video here, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So uh, something else I wanted to mention to you is uh, the T-shirts again. Uh, thank you everybody that supported me on the, on the T-shirt campaign. And we've already got a few more reserved for the next one there. So I got a question for you guys, and I'm looking for a little bit of feedback. Is uh, uh, would you be interested in a uh, in more shirts? I told you before uh, I'm coming up with some different designs, and I've been working with Quinn, and we've come up with a couple designs that I would like to put on a shirt and see if uh, and see if we could sell a few. I think you guys might like it. Uh, just asking you. Is there an interest there? Would you guys like to see another shirt? So uh, if you choose to, you can leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll take it from there, okay? And uh, also, Quinn, Quinn, uh, I think, has been working on a couple of his own designs also, some of his own original stuff. And uh, so he may have a T-shirt campaign or two to uh, that that we'll send a link. We'll, we'll hook Quinn up. I'll share a link whenever he decides to put his shirts up. And uh, it's going to cater to all you shop guys, all you machine shop guys. I, I think you guys will enjoy them too. All right. So I think that's going to be about all that I'm going to go over besides our viewer mail this week. Uh, been, I've been kind of busy. Haven't got a whole lot done. I've been working on Herb's job. I got one piece still in the middle of the machine there. I'm getting ready to finish it. So uh, Herb, your, your stuff will be done very soon and you'll get it back next week, okay? I'm going to go ahead and share this with you. This was pretty interesting. Um, it was last weekend, um, not last weekend, the weekend before actually. I had taken a day off, vacation time, and I won some safety glasses and some gloves from Wheeler. <laughs> uh, Iron, Clat, Iron Cat gloves and um, Trooper safety glasses, okay? They had a thing on Facebook where they were asking people to leave a comment on why, why they like Wheeler. So I think that's what they asked. And I said that uh, Wheeler's always there for my well cleaning needs. And they picked me. So I won the gloves and the safety glasses. So that was pretty cool. Some uh, free swag from Wheeler there. And uh, that's that. So. We've got some more viewer mail. I'm going to go ahead and, and pull these over, and we'll, we'll go ahead and get through this stuff, and uh, we'll get to some uh, machining content there. So this uh, this box right here is from my buddy 
Mike Sapo. Uh, Mike has sent me a couple boxes in the past of some carbide inserts. Uh, he's got that dream job working in the uh, tool crib, <laughs> getting to play with all the carbide. And he always hooks me up, especially with his hot and spicy peanuts. <laughs> we got a couple packs of those. Uh, he sent me a koozie from whenever him and Kelly got married. So um, a stare at tape measure, and he said that he got this for a dollar at um, the Jefferson Swap Me. And by the way, I think I forgot <clears throat> to mention Mike is from uh, Wakesha, w Wakesha, Wisconsin. I apologize if I said that wrong, as always. We got a DNMG insert, and then he hooked me up with another nice assortment. We've got some. We've got some inserts for that little boring bar, the little CCMTs. Um, there's some of my favorites right there. I use these all the time at work. These are the uh, ISCAR IC8350, I believe. No, this is a different grade, IC6015. So it's a WNMG. But the uh, profile is the style that I like right there. And he gave me some round inserts for that round tool and some of those little tiny inserts for that little boring bar, the little carbide bar. These are some Sumitomos. All right, there's some, there's some Sandvik. Brand new pack of Sandvik inserts. Uh, 4315s, okay? I think that's, I think that's that new grade, the, the newer grade, the 4215s, what I tried before. Uh, I've actually been in contact with Sandvik right here recently, and they were going to send me some samples. And I, I believe they said the 4315 was the was the newer grade that they were going to send me a sample to try. So that's some. I believe that's some right there. So all right, and then the last ones here, we got a couple packages of these uh, um, SNMG inserts, these big square ones, and that was in response to the other big tool holder that I had shown that uh, takes a square insert, but it actually takes a different insert than these. So uh, he wanted to send these anyway, and he said to uh, just hold tight, and he's actually got a holder that he's gonna send me for these and uh, send them my way, and then I'm gonna, I'll probably be able to use these down there on the big American pacemaker and uh, do some hogging with, so. Uh, Mike, thank you very much, and I also wanna say hello to your wife, Kelly and uh and the the dogs uh lola and uh leland <laughs> so appreciate all the all the carbide man you know that's a very generous gift and uh it's still shocking that you send me all these carbides here but it's greatly appreciated and um i hope that i can help repay the favor and kind of pass this forward and uh, maybe send send some of these carbides to some other guys that might need some okay so thank you very much mike for, for this package right here. So moving right along, next in line, we've got, uh, we've actually got the tool holder that I was just talking about that Mike was, uh, he was talking about these inserts right here, go to a, a, a holder for SNMG. And I believe that's what this holder right here is. So this stuff right here is from uh, Ryan Washala. And uh, he's known on YouTube there as IL Gopher. And he has given me some more of these inserts right here. Uh, I guess these are some that he has he has picked up and collected through his uh, through his trading over there, and didn't have a need for it. So he said, "Here you go. You can have these." Now the, the holder is is well worn. You can see that it's got a lot of burnt, uh, worn out spot below the, the seat there that it's that's missing. But it's still a usable tool. This is extremely uh, handy for doing chamfers and undercuts. If you need to come in and undercut on a diameter just for a steady rest or something like that. So that's very cool. The, uh, the other thing that, that Ryan has done right here, and he, uh, I think he shared this on the uh, Facebook maybe. <clears throat> he took my idea that I was talking about with the uh, mag back indicator and he has, he got one of the, the magnetic backs here. A lot of guys are buying these from Shars. I think you can get them with the indicator for like 
five or ten bucks or something. It, it ain't very much. So he actually gave me this two inch travel indicator right here. Um, no, it's it's just a two inch travel indicator. No specific name on it. Just says aerospace. So I think this is a made in China indicator right here. Uh, so he's got the new mag back, and what he has done is he has machined the backing plate for the indicator out of out of steel, I believe. I think it's steel. And that's what I was talking about whenever you buy these. This piece right here is plastic, and that is a weak point because whenever you screw it together, it's got a little brass piece in here that's just kind of crimped in there. Whenever you go to pull these things off the cabinet or the lathe or wh wherever you've got it sitting, you know, it's sitting there, your natural instinct is to grab it and just pull it off. Well, it starts weakening where that thread is and it just breaks that plastic. So I had mentioned um, making one out of steel. So Ryan decided he wanted to do that <laughs> and, he, and he made it and he sent it to me. So that's very cool, Ryan. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll definitely use this and I think we'll, we'll go ahead. This looks like it might be a charge. And so we've got the other We've got the other indicator here that the other viewer has had given me and uh, I've already got some chips on it there but uh, this is what I was talking about with the plastic backing right there so the magnets are awesome I mean you can't beat the performance of these big magnets they're, they're great but the, uh, the little plastic backing is the weak point on them so that was very cool very cool Ryan thank you very much thanks for the carbide and the tools and we'll put them to use okay all right, guys, this is going to be the last box of your appreciation mail. And uh, this is from Jesse Fenton, and he's from Greensburg, Indiana. And he, uh, he wrote me a pretty interesting letter here. I wanted to read a couple lines of it to you. Uh, he said he's, he's worked several years in industrial maintenance and now as an electrical engineer. And he's always had interest in manufacturing machining. Um, so past couple years he started following me and a bunch of the other YouTube machinists. I got a question for you, Jesse. Are you familiar with this right here? RCM, Reliability Centered Maintenance. Just curious if you're familiar with this. We're starting to study that. So, uh, he's getting the shop set up now and decided to get him a set of can't twist clamps and in, and also he decided to get me a set because he had heard that I've been wanting some. So he picked me up a set and uh, he goes on to say thank you and he's very appreciative of all the videos and the time that we spend on it. And he also has a YouTube channel, I'll put the link up there, uh, Data Proto CNC. Okay. So we'll have to uh, check out some of his videos. And he said he hasn't uploaded any in a while, but he's going to start uploading some more. So Jesse made my, my uh, one of my wi uh, tool wish list items happen. And he sent me some can't twist clamps. <laughs> uh, three different sizes. All right, and then we got these guys right here and I believe that this, these are the two and a half two and a half D and I immediately put these to use <laughs> you can see the uh, the copper blocks are kind of discolored there because of some some heat but I use this on uh, the Herb Blair project that I've been working on so they, they work perfect for what I need them for so you guys will see that later in that video whenever I produce it so uh, awesome clamps, Jesse. Uh, these are really nice. And yes, I've always wanted some of these since uh, since seeing all the other guys start using them, and I uh, just never realized how how handy they could be. So uh, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to being able to use these. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to have a rack over here on my wall whenever I get organized, and I'll be able to have all my clamps hanging up there, uh, ready for a moment's notice. And uh, Awesome gift, man. Thank you very much, Jesse. Well, it's Saturday, so Saturday is usually my flea market day. And today I went to the flea market and also decided to go and 
um, driving around to a couple other spots that I've been wanting to go to. Uh, it's actually a beautiful day outside. The weather's not too bad. So <clears throat> there is a, um, up the, up the road, there's a place called Trader Dan's. It's like a flea market slash antique shop all in one. So I wanted to go there and look around. And he had a lot, of, a lot of really cool stuff in there, but didn't really find anything for me. Except for this, I did find this there. And I thought it was a pretty neat book. And it's got all of your data and your information you need to know on welding rods. Now I believe it's all for the ESOP brand, but I'm sure that this will be very helpful in just uh, reading and, and getting more knowledge on the different types of welding rods and what they're, um, the different materials that they should be used for. Or if I have an application where I'm trying to find out what kind of rod I should use, I should be able to go to this book and look. So uh, he was asking 18, which I thought was really high and uh, offered him ten dollars and he he took that so i got that uh, i went to the flea market like i said i didn't really find a whole lot but i did find a couple things uh, i got this for a dollar whenever i seen it i was thinking that would be good to uh, clean chips out of the lathe when you when you want to pull all the chips out on the back side you could reach down there with that and uh and pull them big wads of stringy chips out so uh, i don't know what the main purpose of this is but I'm gonna use it for chips I did find this cool little hammer right here it's uh, it's it says punch lock Chicago I've never I've never heard of that brand before but I thought it was a neat little uh, short handled uh, mallet type hammer and uh, he wanted six dollars for it so I paid him for that and he also had these three uh, greenfield uh, easy outs and he took two dollars for all those so I grabbed those and I've been actually taking a few of these to work so that I have a, a selection of easy outs down there I haven't had to use any yet but I just wanted to have some on hand in case I ever do need some so you know, getting tools like that it's just easy to fill your toolbox with the things that you need when you're shopping at the flea market for some things so that was the flea market stuff uh, I got I got these little Dremel tools or Dremel accessories for uh, my coworker. He he has a little Dremel, and uh, I got all these things right here for like a dollar. So I got those for him. All right. So when I went out there to Trader Dan's, there's uh, right up the road. There's that's where our our Harbor Freight is, or uh, I always call it Horrible Freight. <laughs> I don't typically like to shop there, but I do go there for certain things. Okay. They have, uh, they have some stuff in there that I feel is worthy of buying and using around the shop. For instance, uh, these little 90 degree angle grinders. This is, I had one of these and uh, when I was broken into, the guy stole my little grinder. So I've been wanting to go buy one. These are 20 bucks. You can usually get them on sale for less than that, but this one was $20. So uh, I went ahead and picked me up one so I'd have a little right angle grinder. And I wanted to get some organizers. I'm wanting to go through all these loose carbides that I had, carbide inserts. And I'm going to go ahead and just start putting them in some of these containers like this and maybe labeling what the insert is. And that way I can start organizing all these things better. And, and just instead of having all these loose carbides sitting in all these drawers, I can have some uh, organ organizers there. I got some more of these uh, little magnet trays just to use on the machines for either anchor lube or oil or, or, or whatever, you know, a couple bucks a piece, so I got those. This right here is what I, I, I wanted to share with you that I was actually the most excited about. This magnetic paper towel holder, it's the US General brand. So <clears throat> I found these uh, on display on the big US General toolboxes, and I've never seen them before. And you actually get two of them, it's a pair so that you can use them like in the picture here, okay? But I didn't see the boxes there. I, all they had was, they had two of these up on the top of the box there. As soon as I seen that, I had a better idea for me to use these things. So, uh, there wasn't any there. I had to go ask the guy. I was like, hey, do you guys have any of these? He went and checked in the back and came out. I told him, I said, I wanted two of them. So he brought me two boxes. And then I realized, well, you actually get uh, a pair of them per box so that's fine I got four of them so I thought of a better use in my shop to use these for and uh, I'm gonna grab the camera 
and I'm going to take you down there and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use these for, okay? <laughs> so hold tight. All right, so down here at my welding machine, uh, for a long time I've been storing my uh, welding helmets up here on the top and hanging on the bottles on the other side there. So when I seen these, I said, I got a perfect solution for these in my shop. We're going to put them on there like that. And I got a spot to hang my welded shield now. That's perfect. And there's the other three. <laughs> so I've got my, um, my ear protection, my face protection there, and then my other two Huntsman welding helmets, which I still use sometimes. And I always have these hanging up here. So I got these things now. Got to make them look even and square with the world, right? So I thought that was a pretty cool way to use this. And, and these have other uses too. You know, you could, you could hang your, uh, your shop apron on it, your, uh, your, your welding jacket, or, or whatever. There's, there's probably all kind of other uses for these things. So, yeah, <clears throat> there it is. Uh, Harbor Freight, I think it's eight, it was $8 for the pair. So you get two of them for eight bucks, all right? So I just thought I would share that little tip with you guys and maybe that'll help somebody else too. Added in the wrong feed selection. I was running 186 RPM. I'm going to speed it up to 235. Got to go to high range. There we go. Another beautiful Saturday evening here in Florida and it's grilling time so here's your weekly grilling shot it's been in there 
reading all your comments for SNS and the uh, gantry crane and I got me some meat on the grill doing me up a rack of ribs today And that's what I'm going to be dining on the day. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and try the same cut with this other ISCAR tool. And I believe that was the uh, COMG, I believe. I don't forgot now. So we're going to try the same cut, uh, 400,000, same RPM feed, everything. We're just going to compare how it does. Looking pretty good. Alright, this time we're going to run a half inch depth of cut and a 20 thousandths feed rate. Alright, we got the LM, LM, LNMX insert back in there. Uh, we're going to do the 500 thousandths depth of cut and 20 thousandths feed rate and compare it to the other tool. We got the shaft flipped around. I'm gonna go ahead and roughen this side. We got a pretty good ways to go down. Uh, it's about eight inch right now. We're gonna take it down to seven inches. I'm gonna do another uh, half inch pass, quarter inch per side, uh, same feed rate, everything, 20,000 feed, same RPMs. Uh, just got a little longer cut to make. <laughs> 